What's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be creating two commands for kicking and banning users from a server. Before we start, if you're interested in knowing how to get this folder structure where you have the events and commands in their own files and folders, then be sure to check my advanced command handler video linked down below. Anyway, let's get started. We're first going to start with the ban command. So let's create a folder inside of commands called moderation and create a file inside of it called ban.js. This file will export an object. So let's say module.exports and we're going to export an object. Now we're going to have a few properties, of course. The first one is going to be the name, which is going to be ban. The next one is the description. Inside of this, I'm just going to say bans a member from this server. The next thing is going to be options, which is going to be an array of objects. The first option is going to have a name of target user. The description for this is going to be the user you want to ban. And the type is going to be, of course, a mentionable. But to use that, we're going to have to import something from Discord.js. So let's say const require Discord.js. And we're going to import something called application command option type. And we're going to set the type to application command option type dot mentionable. And of course, this is going to be required. So let's set this to true. Now we can duplicate this. And the second option is going to be the reason. And I'm going to say the reason you want to ban. And the type is going to be a string. This option is not required, but I'm going to show you how to have a default value in place for that. Now, outside options, we're also going to need a few permissions. First, the permissions for the person running the command and the permissions for the bot in order to execute the command. So let's start with the user permissions. So let's say permissions required. And this is going to be an array. And of course, to add permissions, we're going to have to import something called permission flag bits. And inside of this, the permission that we're going to need is permission flag bits dot ban members. Now, to make sure our bot also has enough permissions, we're going to add bot permissions. And this is also going to be the same thing. So I'll just copy this. Now, the structure of our command is done. The next thing that we need is, of course, the callback function. This function is going to give us access to client and interaction. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function and put it at the complete top instead so that I don't have to scroll all the way down whenever I open this file. Now, if you try to do something like interaction dot, you're not going to have IntelliSense from VS Code. So we're going to do something that is going to make our lives a lot easier. So before this callback function, type forward slash star star and press enter. And this is going to give us options. And what we're going to put inside client is going to be, of course, client, which we're going to import and also interaction. So let's import these two things. And for client, we're going to use this client. So let's just paste it in here. And for this interaction, we're just going to put whoops, we're just going to put this interaction. So if I save this and inside callback, now if I try to do something like interaction dots, we're going to have a bunch of options and it's going to make development a lot easier. Now let's start by getting this target user from the command. So let's say const target user ID. And the reason why I'm saying target user ID is because a mentionable is going to return an ID. So this is going to be interaction.options.get and we're going to get the target user. Make sure this matches this right here. And of course, we're going to have to get the value from this object. The next thing that we want to get is the reason. So let's say const reason equals interaction.options.get and we're going to get the reason. However, you'll notice this one is not required, which means this can also be null, which means we're going to use optional chaining. So we're going to say question mark dot value. And optionally, if this does not exist, we're going to set it to no reason provided. Now, the first thing that we want to do is defer a reply because we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. So in order to defer a reply, let's say await interaction dot defer reply. And because we're using await, we're going to have to put async up here. Now let's get the target user object by using this ID. So let's say const target user equals await interaction dot guild dot members dot fetch. And we're going to fetch it using this target user ID. Now it's possible that the user might have left and the data is still cached. So this command would technically still run, but we also need to make sure that this user exists. So let's say if not target user, then we're going to await interaction.edit reply because we've deferred a reply. 
And what we're going to say is that user doesn't exist in this server. And of course, make sure to return because you don't want this function to continue any further. Now let's make sure the person that we're trying to ban is not the server owner because that's technically not possible. So let's say if target user dot ID is exactly equal to interaction dot guild dot owner ID, then we're going to say await interaction dot edit reply and reply with you can't ban that user because they are the server owner. And of course, we're going to return. Now we have to run one final check to see if the role of the person we're trying to ban is both below the bot's role and also below the person who's trying to execute the command. So let's get the role position for all our bot, the target user, and ourselves. So I'm going to start with the target user role position. So I'm going to say const target user role position, and I'm going to set it to target user dot roles dot highest dot position. And I'm going to add a comment here that says highest role of the target user. The next role position that we want to get is for the person who's running the command. So let's say const request user role position equals interaction dot member dot roles dot highest dot position. And I'm also going to add another comment saying highest role of the user running the command. Finally, we're going to get the bot role position. So let's say const bot role position equals interaction dot guild dot members dot me dot roles dot highest dot position. That's a mouthful, but let's also add a comment saying highest role of the bot. Now, of course, we want to compare all of these against each other and they return numbers. So let's first start by comparing the target user role position with the request user role position. So let's say if target user role position is more than or equal to request user role position, then we're going to say await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to say you can't ban that user because they have the same or higher role than you. And we're going to return over here. Next, we're going to check if the target user's role is higher or equal to the bot's role. So let's say if target user role position is more than or equal to the bot role position, then we're going to say await interaction dot edit reply and say I can't ban that user because they have the same or higher role than me. And finally, we're going to return. Now, after all of those checks, we can finally ban the user. So let's add a comment here saying ban the target user. So down here, we're going to add a try catch block. And if there's an error, we'll just console log that. There was an error when banning, and we're going to add the error in this string. Now inside the try block, what we can do is we can say await target user dot ban. And this is going to take an object and inside this object, we can pass in the reason that we got. So let's say reason. And because the reason and reason match, we don't actually have to do something like this. We can just add reason and it will work. And of course, once the user is banned, we're going to say await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to say user target user was banned. And I'm going to add a new line, which is going to have the reason for banning. Awesome. Now we can save our file and try to run this command. Let's first take our bot online. So I'm going to use nodemon. Now inside of our server, the first thing that I want to try to do is of course change the role position to see if everything works fine. So I'm going to change the role of the bot that I'm trying to ban and put it over our current test bot. So let's save the changes. Let's try to run the ban command. So it's working. So I can say ban under control bots. And I'm not going to add a reason. So I'm just going to try to run the command. So it's saying I can't ban that user because they have the same or higher role than me. So it works just fine. So I can go ahead and reduce this role position. Once I have it saved, let's try to run that command again. And I'm still not going to give a reason. So let's just run this. As you can see, the bot was banned and it says reason was no reason provided. So the ban command is working just fine. The kick command is really similar. So we can actually just go back and copy this entire thing and create a new file inside moderation called kick.js. 
and I'm gonna paste it over here. Of course, don't save this file just yet. We're gonna have to change ban to kick. I'm gonna change the description to kicks a member from the server, the target user you want to kick, the reason you want to kick, and make sure you change the permissions. So permission flag bits dot kick members, and of course, save it for your bot as well. Now inside our callback function, all we have to do is change the bands to kick. So you can not kick that user, you can't kick that user. Now, most importantly, in this part, instead of saying dot ban, we're going to say dot kick. And of course, we're going to pass the reason as well, because even kick requires a reason. And we can reply with user was kicked. Awesome. We can now save this file and see if this works. So the command was registered, but I'm going to have to reinvite the bot because I just banned it. Now our bot is back, which means we can try to kick it. So let's say slash kick, and I'm going to set it to under control bot. This time I am going to provide a reason and I'm going to say testing. So the bot did kick it and it says user was kicked reason testing. Now, if you guys are having any problems, be sure to join my Discord server. I'll have the link to it down below and create a new post inside the code help channel and I'll make sure to help you out. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you guys are enjoying my content, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.